Rabies is caused by Lisa viruses in the rhabdovirus family. Lisa viruses are usually confined to one major reservoir species in a given geographic area, although spillover to other species is common. To date, there are over 15 different Lisa viruses that have been described. Globally, rabies virus is the most important member of the genus. Rabies is an acute progressive viral encephalitis that principally affects carnivores and bats, although any mammal can be affected. Around the world, the dog is the most significant reservoir of this virus, particularly in developing countries. Generally, the name of the mammalian species acting as a reservoir and vector is used to describe the type of rabies from an epidemiological standpoint. Accordingly, rabies maintained by dog-to-dog -dog transmission is termed canine rabies, and rabies in a dog originating from another mammal, such as a skunk, would be referred to as skunk rabies in a dog. Usually, saliva is infectious at the time clinical signs occur, but domestic dogs, cats, and ferrets may shed virus for several days before onset of clinical signs. Skunks have been reported to shed virus up to eight days before onset of signs. The incubation period can be both prolonged and variable. Virus often remains at the inoculation site for a considerable time, explaining the efficacy of post-exposure prophylaxis by local infiltration of rabies immune globulin. Most rabies cases in dogs develop within 3 to 12 weeks, but in one reported human case of rabies, the incubation time exceeded 8 years. Focusing first on rabies in North America, virus variants in red and arctic foxes are commonly associated with disease in Canada and Alaska. Raccoons serve as the main vector along the east coast, and gray foxes commonly serve this role in the southwest. Most recent human cases of rabies in the U.S. have been associated with bat rabies, and bat rabies is distributed throughout the Americas. There are three rabies virus variants in skunks in the U.S. However, in bats, each variant is associated with a particular bat species. Cats are the most common domestic species to suffer from rabies in the U.S., and people have developed rabies following cat bites. However, cats don't seem to be vectors, and no cat has ever been reported to transmit rabies to another cat. In the last 30 years, raccoons have become a vector of great significance. Canine rabies exists in Mexico with the potential to spread northward. The vampire bat is an important reservoir in Latin America and has been associated with rabies in cattle. Insectivorous bats are important vectors of rabies throughout Europe. In Western Europe, red fox rabies was eliminated by oral vaccination. In Eastern Europe, rabies occurs raccoon dogs and in Northern Europe in wolves. Wildlife serving as reservoirs in other parts of the world include the mongoose in the Caribbean, southern Africa, and parts of Asia, jackals in Africa, marmosets in Brazil, and ferret badgers in China. Rodents and logomorphs rarely constitute a risk of exposure to rabies virus. Regardless of species, the disease is fatal once clinical signs appear. During the prodromal period, which can last up to three days, animals show only vague clinical signs. The disease progresses rapidly after the onset of paralysis and death is virtually certain a few days thereafter. Some animals may die rapidly without obvious clinical signs. Regardless of species, most rabies cases are characterized by acute behavioral changes such as loss of appetite, irritability, ataxia, changes in vocalization, and progressive paralysis. Aggressive or vicious behavior, that is, furious rabies, may occur, but is not always seen. Abnormal behavior by a wild animal, including loss of fear to humans or daytime appearance in a nocturnal animal, should raise suspicion for rabies in that animal. If paralysis, but not behavioral changes, are prominent, the term is dumb or paralytic rabies. Such paralysis can cause profuse salivation and an inability to swallow. Anyone examining the mouth of such animal without gloves may expose themselves to rabies. Significant species variation in presenting signs must be considered by veterinary clinicians, and any unexplained central nervous system disease in an animal with potential exposure should be considered suspect. Rabies is found throughout the world, but a few island countries like the United Kingdom have enforced rigorous quarantine regulations for mammals and claim to be free of the disease. Mass vaccination of dogs and promotion of responsible pet ownership 
has the greatest potential for cost-effective, long-term eradication of rabies. Comprehensive guidelines for control in dogs have been prepared internationally by World Health Organization and in the USA by National Association of State Public Health Veterinarians include the following. Notification of suspected cases in euthanasia of dogs with clinical signs and dogs bitten by a suspected rabid animal. Reduction of contact rates between susceptible dogs by leash laws, dog movement control, and quarantine. Mass immunization of dogs by campaigns and by continuing vaccination of young dogs. Stray dog control and euthanasia of unvaccinated dogs with low levels of dependency on or restriction by people and dog registration. Many effective vaccines such as modified live virus, recombinant, and inactivated types are available worldwide. No modified live rabies virus vaccines are currently marketed in the U.S. After an initial series of two vaccines one year apart, recommended vaccination frequency is every three years. Because of the increasing importance of rabies in cats, vaccination of cats is now highly recommended. Oral vaccines have only been approved for use in wildlife. For people in high-risk groups, such as veterinarians, veterinary technicians, animal control officers, diagnostic laboratory workers, and possibly travelers working in countries which canine rabies is enzootic, pre-exposure vaccination with a cell culture-based vaccine is recommended. Even if vaccinated, if exposed to a rabid animal, supplementation with a regimen of two doses of vaccine on days 0 and 3 post-exposure is recommended. However, if an unvaccinated person is bitten by a rabid animal, recommended treatment consists of wound care, infiltration of rabies immune globulin, and vaccine administration on days 0, 3, 7, and 14 post-exposure. Timely post-exposure prophylaxis virtually assures human survival. The preventative vaccination approach represents a one health approach to disease control leading to simultaneously better health outcomes for animal and humankind as prevention in common vector species is crucial.